unto him and said unto him, The Lord is with thee, thy mighty man of battle. Amen. 14. And the Lord looked upon him and said, Go in this thy might, and thou shalt save Israel from the hand of the Midianites. Have not I sent thee? Amen. We know our thing is a mighty man of God. Yeah, right. But my subtopic would be imagine me. <coughs> now, Gideon and Deacon Peter told us a little history of Gideon. Gideon is a man whose father did not even believe in the God that he served. Right. Many times, you know, that's hard for a man or a young man to follow or not follow the path of his father. You know, in Israel, the history was if the father did bad, he would inherit his sins, and his sins would be on until the fourth generation. So it was just a family thing that continued over and over and over again. But here, he was chosen by God to do God's work. And as Deacon Bill said, when you look up the word valor, or take that title, Mighty Man of Valor, you think of somebody big and strong, somebody able to great feats of physical abilities. But when you study Gideon, he was never mentioned about how tall he was. That's right. Or how good looking he was, or how strong he was, or what line he came from. He was just a man willing to be used by God. Uh -huh. See, the valor part is being able to trust God enough to know that you're able to do what God said you can do. If you gifted I know my son won't mind if I didn't, but my son has always been gifted. He's been singing since he was a little boy in elementary school. Learned the word of God as a little child in the church. Was able to preach and sing and testify, all them things because he was gifted. The Bible says gifts and calling comes without repentance. And it can take you a long way, but when you take, your, when you take what you have, and let God use it. Yeah. It becomes more than a gift. It yeah. becomes right. an anointing. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. When Gideon decided, or when God found Gideon that Deacon, he was hiding the wine. Now he kind of had something he thought was precious under him, so his enemies wouldn't get to it. But God always knows what you're doing. Whatever you're doing, what you're doing. Right. Sometimes we think we can get away from God and hide around the corner, go up under the, go into the club, go somewhere where we're not supposed to go, but the Bible says God's eyes is everywhere beholding the evil and, and the good. So that's there's right. nowhere you can go. Right. David right. wrote in the 139 song, he said, if I go unto heaven, uh -huh. thou art there. Yeah. Uh -huh. Take my bed, thou art there. Even yeah. in hell, uh -huh. and I'm trying to get away from you. There's nothing I can do to can get out of God's way. That's right. So Gideon is decided the angel of the Lord come and visit him. When you deal with that, you know, that means God decided that you were so special. I want to send me a special person just to deal with you. You know how you get that special call and letter for somebody that's just brighten up your heart, brighten up your day. God said, I'm going to deal with Gideon so I can encourage him. Yeah. See, one thing about the story of Gideon, it's not about how strong he was. That's right. Just how much faith he had in God. That's right. We have a modern day Gideons in the church all through this house. Because it's not about how well you can sing. You just need to sing. <coughs> it's not about how well you can preach. If he called you to preach, just to preach. Yeah. Yeah. Like Pastor said, the oldest saint would tell you, just open your mouth. And it will. <coughs> now you do need to study. Oh, yeah. So people don't think you're eating. That's right. But when you preach God's word, yeah. open your mouth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it'll come out. That's right. You know, as Gideon decides that, and he ponders in his mind if he's going to do what God says, not do what God says, we always want to test God. Uh -huh. The first yeah. thing we want to do is, God, you need to prove who you say you are to me. Because I need to know for myself that God told me to do it. So you got to show me. So as Gideon gets ready to prepare himself, he has questions in his mind. But one thing about God is, if you're going to ask God to do something for you, God is going to ask you to do something for him. All right. If you don't think because you can ask God, God can't ask you. So as Gideon wants to 
know if God is with them. And he asked God the question, why are we going through if you will? God said, oh, ain't no problem. I'll take care of this. But I need you to do something for me. All right. See, many times our biggest test does not come from outside the world. It comes from your family. Uh -huh. The first thing he said, I need you to go to your father's house and take two of his bullets. Now, I can tell you, if my son came to my house and took my two bullets, only God could have protected him. <laughs> <laughs> so I know the Lord was with Gideon when he told him. So he went to his house and told him, I said, not just take the bullets, but I want you to go to bed and tear down that up. Cut down that growth. And I need you to do it. Now, see, so many times he said, Well, I, I, I ain't the one, but I know somebody who can. I can get them and they'll help. They'll do it for me. And I just say what I did. But, but God said, I need you to do it. See, your blessing is when you do what God tells you to do. That's why. Right. Not put it on somebody else. Right. Now, when you read the story, Gideon didn't do it like most of us did. He wasn't bold about it. He waited until it got dark. You got it some friends. Now, if you ain't bold and you got to do it that way, that's all right, because God accepted you. That's right. But sometimes the Bible says you got to have holy bold. Uh -huh. Sometimes uh -huh. you got to stick your chest out. Sometimes yeah. you got to speak up. Sometimes you got to be known. That's right. But every now and then, God let you do it in a little nice, right. quiet way. Thank you. Now, one thing about God is when God tells you to do something, you better believe the devil is listening. What God is saying. Yeah. God give you some instruction. The devil know exactly what God told you. Yeah. And he's going to watch you to see if you're going to do it. Yeah. So now as, as Gideon had gone and destroyed the altar and cut it down the road, the devil comes right to his house. He's in his father's house and the worship of the bells come to the door. Say, we won't get him. Because he's going to tore down the altar. He's going to cut down our road. Now, we need to see him. The devil is going to challenge you to your face. <laughs> yes, he is. One thing about the devil is, I'm going to tell you what my pastor told me. There's only three people who know you. God, the devil, and your sin. And you can't fool none of them. That's the truth. Right. They know exactly what's in you and what you're going to do. Yeah. So as the devil comes in to confront Gideon, an unlikely person, a person that served the devil, that's why the Bible says, when you do what right, God will make your enemies be at peace with you. Yeah. Gideon's father speaks up for Gideon. Now, he don't serve the God we serve. But he said, now, if Baal is such a powerful God, why don't you come and take care of Baal's business? Let Baal right. take his own business. That's right. So many times, we want to get in everybody else's business. Yeah. you got enough business. you got enough time dealing with your own business. Oh, right. oh. If you deal with all your issues, you ain't got time for nobody else's issues. You ain't got time for nobody else's problems. You can work on yourself. That's a 24-7 job all by itself. That's it. That's it. But God will always find a way to take care of you. You know, the Bible say that it's not by power. It's not by might, but it's by my spirit. We get in trouble when we rely so much on our own intelligence. Yeah. Realize that we are all that, you know how we say, all that is bad. Yeah. Some of us say, I ain't conceited, I'm just convinced. I'm not a, I don't think, I know. You know, we just have all kinds of little things all about kinds. how much confidence we have in ourselves. Yeah. But when you really want to be a mighty man of God, you forget about who you are. That's right. 